Welcome back to another episode of Wilt Fong's Recruiting Whip Around. I have my pal, my colleague, my cohort, uh, 24-7 Sports National Recruiting Editor, Brandon Huffman, joining me to talk about our 2023 Top 247 ranking launch on 24-7 Sports. Brandon, what's going on, man? Steve, it's another day in paradise. Good to be here. Good to uh, be with you for the long term. My hey, friend, absolutely, man. Well, a guy that's going to be with us for the long term in this 2023 cycle is LB, Levius L.T. Overton out of Alpharetta, Georgia, Milton High School. He remains our number one player overall, and he's the first prospect we met with five stars in his class. Yeah, I mean, you look at the 2021 number one player, JT Tumolo, who went wire to wire. He, too, was a pass rusher. We know the premium that's placed on pass rushers. And obviously, Overton is one of the elite pass rushers in the country, regardless of class. And you look at the production that he had this year, the 21-plus sacks. He's showing every bit what you want an elite pass rusher on the edge to be. And it's no surprise that he is our first five-star in 2023. Brandon, does LT remind you of anybody? You know, I, I like the, the the comp to a guy like a, you know, Chase Young, Cameron Hayward, kind of that longer, more explosive type guy, but he's so dang physical. And, and you look at just how quick he is off the edge and that, that combination of power. He's not as tall as a guy like Mario Williams or, or Julius Peppers, but when you watch this film, he's kind of a throwback. You, you look at him and you see a lot of kind of those early 2000s, early to mid 2000s college players that ended up being top draft picks in the 2000s before we went really quarterback heavy. And I think he reminds me a little bit more of some of those older school guys, the, the Mario Williams type or the uh, or Julius Peppers type that are extremely athletic, have the length that can really give athletic off of the tackle spits all day. Speaking of Julius Peppers, LT Overton has had added basketball offers from Stanford and Ohio State, so he's a terrific ball player, just like Julius Pepper was. This recruitment is just getting going. He told me recently he doesn't envision himself anywhere, but there are some schools that are already being making themselves prominent. You have Alabama, you have Clemson. He's been able to visit both of those campuses. Texas A&M, his parents used to work there. He's been to College Station, then in Ohio State again. Those are four schools that I think he's building a report with right now. Georgia, Oregon, Michigan, Notre Dame, some of the others that certainly have the family's attention there. A lot, three quarterbacks that have our attention, Brandon, in, in this recruiting update is Arch Manning, who remains our number one signal caller, uh, Malachi Nelson out of California, and Dante Moore out of Detroit. All three share the same grade, 96. What stands out about them? Well, I think you look at all three and they all have the plus qualities. Obviously, Manning is going to be attributed to the genes that he has. His grandfather was an NFLer, his uncle, his father, both his uncles. His father was a good football player who happened to be the young or the older brother of two really good football players, two future Hall of Fame and Super Bowl winners. So you, you look at the, the ties that he has, the family ties, the bloodlines. We see it a lot in, in previous classes where you have guys that have a long history of football in their blood. But he's not just a man. You know, he's one of those players that if his name was Arch Smith, he would still be just as recruited as heavily as he is because he's got the arm. He, he's got the ability uh, to, to make plays when he's thrown off platform. He can be a scrambler. He's a pro style guy, but he can make plays when he needs to with his legs. I, I think you look at Malachi Nelson and he reminds me a little bit of Bryce Young just in terms of the way his body is, except throw four inches on Bryce Young. Neither one of them are really thick guys. Neither one are really big guys. They're, they're kind of skinny, but then they have the arm strength that kind of belied what their body said it might be. And then you have Dante Moore. He reminds me of Evan Prater a little bit in that he's a big time player that might be a little bit ignored because Evan Prater had the, the I guess, the ominous task of being in the same class as Bryce Young and DJ Leongalele being in the Midwest wasn't thought of as as much as those two but a guy that was probably one of the biggest group of five signings in the history of football now I don't think that Dante Moore is going to end up at a G5 school but a lot of similarities to Prater that he's every bit as good he should be in the discussion with Manning and Nelson and I think that over the next two years we're going to see the big three kind of jostling to see who ends up the number one quarterback in that class. Imagine being the number three quarterback nationally, but you're the number 12 player overall. That's how good that those three quarterbacks are. Yeah, man, I can't wait till we get a chance to see those three guys in the same setting. I've seen Dante Moore live a couple times. 
He's been terrific, including most recently at the Indianapolis Pylon event this past weekend. And I've seen Malachi live as, as well at the quarterback collective event in Indianapolis uh, over, over the summer. And then I, I watched three or four Arch Manning's full game, see Malachi play full game, and, and, and of course, Dante Moore. So those three right there in the mix for the number one quarterback, number one quarterback spot. Who's in the mix for them? For, for Arch Manning, I, I, I'm looking at schools like Texas, LSU, Alabama, Clemson, uh, as as few that I know he's talking to and, and, and having dialogue with uh, Ole Miss and Tennessee certainly swinging there with with the family ties. Uh, uh, but so many schools, it's very early for him. And, and like Levius Overton, Arch uh, told me recently he, he doesn't see himself anywhere yet and he can't wait to get out and take visits. Malachi Nelson recently told our colleague Greg Biggins that he's most familiar with Florida State and, and USC. Florida State's offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham. Not many guys work harder on the trail uh, uh, than Dillingham and connecting and building reports with, with top prospects and, and uh, USC obviously being the local program, but Alabama, LSU, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Texas, some of the others uh, that are involved with, with Malachi. And Dante Moore has 22 offers and, and uh, he says he's done di- dove into all of them and and has something nice to say about each of them over the weekend he spoke highly of of notre dame and michigan but that recruitment's just just ramping up for him as well a guy that's a major stock up for us brandon cormani mclean he's our number one corner in the country moves into the top 10 nine interceptions as a sophomore what do you love about cormani well, I love the fact that he's a football player. I mean, you put him at receiver, he can be an elite playmaking receiver. He's explosive with the ball in his hands. But where he's at his best is at cornerback. He's got tremendous ball skills. He, he kind of reminds me of uh, Quincy, uh, excuse me, of uh, Quincy McKinstry. And, and kind of that, that neither was super tall, but they looked longer than maybe their height would indicate. He's about 6'1", 170. McKinstry was about six foot and a half, 170, 175-ish. But both had just incredible instincts, their ability to break on the ball, their ability to bait quarterbacks into making those throws. And you look at nine interceptions, I mean, after four or five interceptions, you think teams would avoid him, but that's the instincts that he has. Even when he's given a cushion, he makes the break on the balls to be able to get the ball pick off the quarterback, and then because he's such a dynamic playmaker, end up doing damage on the return. So he's a guy that I think we're going to really see uh, over the next couple of years be one of those elite pass coverage type of guys that may end up getting some action as a receiver at some point, uh, and also a guy that I think could affect the game in special teams, be a punt returner, be a kick returner. The dynamicness kind of reminds me of a Dory Jackson. I know we're, we're throwing out some big-time comps there, but – just you look at what he can do with the ball in his hands, but he's a better cover guy than Adoree ever was at the same stage. Adoree was a great all-around football player, but I look at McLean as a great all-around football player, but an elite cover corner, and I think that's the reason why his stock is as high as it is moving into the top 10. Uh, his stock is rising on the trail to LSU offers on Monday. His coach tells me that was a big offer for him. It says LSU is near the top of that list alongside uh, Oklahoma and Alabama, and he said Ohio State's really pushing – for McLean as well. Let's bring this full circle, Brandon, as we wrap this up. Uh, LT Overton, our number one player overall, the first five-star in the 2023 class. Who's going to challenge him for number one overall? We already talked about the three quarterbacks, Arch Manning, uh, Malachi Nelson, and, and Dante Moore, but there's two defensive linemen right on his heels. They're both from Alabama, Peter Woods and James Smith. Talk about their uh, talk about what you love about those two guys. Well, what I love about Woods that, you know, again, he's an explosive pass rusher. He's not as long, uh, maybe as Overton is, but he's just as strong, just as explosive off the edge. And a guy that I think that you look at what his body looks like, you see a frame that's going to be able to add more weight, add more strength, add more muscle over the next couple of years, but with the athleticism, the explosiveness off the edge where it shouldn't slow him down. And I think when you you look at the defensive linemen that have really flourished in college football over the last few years, they have been those guys that can play in that 280, 290 range. We're keeping that same speed, that same quickness. Uh, A guy like a Quinnen Williams who, you know, can move along inside. I know that the player comp for him right now is Rashawn Gary. You know, Rashawn Gary at various points could play inside. He could play outside. He could be a stand-up edge guy. You can use him in a myriad of ways. And that's what I think Peter Woods has the ability. And then you look at James Smith. He's a true interior guy, a, a guy that, again, much like Woods, He's got the ability to probably put on more weight, 
but to keep that quick first step. And you look at his strength, you look at the leverage he plays with, you look at the push that he gets to get into the backfield. He can be a guy that's stopping the run. He can get to the quarterback. He can be a pass rusher coming from the inside. You can use him in a variety of stunts, and he's going to cause problems for centers and guards because of his strength, because of his quickness. And so, uh, again, you know, we, we talk about how – in 2020, our top players were both quarterbacks. Number one and two were both quarterbacks. 2021, our top two players were both uh, pass rushers. And now you look at 2023, and your top three guys are all defensive linemen. It's a very defensive lineman heavy class, and those three are among the best. Right now, we like Overton. Can he go wire to wire like JT did? Or are Peter Woods and James Smith going to cause some problems there at him keeping that number one spot? It's going to be a blast to watch those three because they are all elite defensive linemen. Peter Woods just dropped his top 10. James Smith, all the heavyweights are coming after him too. Both guys are from Alabama. Lebius LT Overton, his dad used to work at Alabama. His mom used to work at Alabama. I mentioned Alabama prominently with him. But could you imagine all three of those D linemen playing together in Tuscaloosa? I absolutely can. I mean, when two of them are from Alabama, that obviously portends well. I mean, we, we see what Nick Saban's done to recruit nationally. Now you have two of the three elite often, or defensive linemen in the country, in your backyard. I mean, is that catnip for Nick Saban or what? And nine out of the last 11 years or 10 out of the last 12 Alabamas finished number one uh, in our rankings. Uh, if they land those three guys, it makes me immediately think of the Clemson class that signed a couple of years ago with Brzee and Miles Murphy and, and those guys that are going to make a big impact as sophomores for the Tigers this year. Uh, but stay locked on 24-7 sports all day for more on the Top 247 2023 release and just your recruiting coverage wall-to-wall. -wall. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care.